Hi, it's Rich Tarani. Thanks for watching. You are taking part in the TMC On the Road series. Uh, it's September 2015. We're in Dallas, Texas. Romnik Camo is on the program. He's from Imagine Communications. Romnik, how are you? Very well. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So tell me a little bit about your company, what, what you guys are up to. So Imagine Communications, uh, I often joke, is 50 years old, but two years young. Uh, roughly two years ago, we were divested from Harris and... Um, um, we've since then set a very exciting vision for ourselves and the industry, and we've been leading a rapid transformation of the industry from where it is today to an all-IP, cloud-based, software-defined construct. And we service uh, 3,000 customers in 185 countries, 80% uh, of the top 100 media companies. I'm proud to say we secured our 10th Emmy just recently, uh, Tech Emmy. Congratulations. Thank you. And, um, uh, you know, our R&D team as well as our product team is really proud. Uh, you know, we brought the 10th one home. Um, we've, we've devised a, a very exciting portfolio for ourselves over the last two years. Um, and uh, we've got two ways we service our customers. We are in um, our customers' uh, operations by by delivering software uh, with which they buy and sell ads. And um, uh, we roughly transact 50 million, uh, trillion, sorry, ad impressions for our customers. And the software transacts 46 billion in ad revenue for our customers. And on the infrastructure side, uh, at last count, on an annual basis, we were serving over 15 billion gigabytes of video uh, through our equipment, uh, 3 million uh, products deployed. And I'm talking about premium content, I'm talking about live video, I'm not talking about low-res video of some sort. So really proud to be a part of, um, part of Imagine servicing so many customers. So um, I've met your company a few times at the NAB shows in Vegas, and, and we've uh, had other meetings in New York, um, and you know, a bunch of my writers have covered you guys and what you're up to, and so I'm going to... I'll give a succinct overview from my perspective, and then you add on to it. You're really rolling up the, the video space and taking it to the next generation by uh, applying technologies that we've seen in the IT space, in the telecom space, such as software-defined networking and um, network functions virtualization or virtualization in general, and, um, of course, IP communications, and you're applying kind of all three of those things simultaneously to um, the video market, which is was quite a legacy business in terms of having these boxes that are in some cases decades old and haven't really evolved and old style cables, right? So that's my understanding. Where am I right? Where am I wrong? So I think um, I think you are spot on in uh, in your interpretation that the industry is at a phase where, say, telco was, um, you know, ten years ago. Um, there is a lot of old baseband technology that exists in uh, our customers' plant. And um, um, because of uh, the legacy infrastructure, they're not able to um, be more agile, uh, be um, uh, more cost effective. So what we are trying to do is, is we are bringing the attributes, the ones you spoke about um, um, uh, in and around IP to this industry, giving them the agility, the cost points, as well as the, um, the overall um, effectiveness so that they can drive more revenue, launch new channels quickly, um, deliver more ads in more geographies and more channels. And we talked briefly um, at NAB, and then we just talked a little bit earlier before we got onto this, um, this interview on the camera about how one of your larger deployments uh, sometime back uh, was the Disney ABC. And what were some of the benefits to, to them? So Disney ABC is actually a, a great case study because uh, they – they have been on this page that they need to get more agility in their operation. And in order to do that, they knew that they had to evolve from their current baseband infrastructure to IP. And we've been working with them to virtualize their master control facilities as well as take their, their play out to the cloud. And uh, we announced um, the execution of that in, at NAB in April uh, earlier this year. And since then, most recently, you know, we've, we've announced another um, um, interesting cloud deployment, and that's with Al Ryan, where they were able to set up an operation, a cloud playout operation in the cloud in under two days. So the idea really is um, if, I'm a, if I'm an operator and if I want to 
set up a new channel to serve a niche market, or if I want to uh, set up a test channel to go test out an expatriate population in a given geography, I should be able to do that very quickly. But today's technology doesn't allow our customers to do that. Um, but when we look at the alternatives that we are presenting to them, it allows them to do that very rapidly. And as a result, they can really, really go after new markets uh, and um, uh, transact business more effectively. And I see a nice parallel between what's happening in telecom and even a further parallel, and that is very simply that in the telecom market, there seems to be the need to move to off-the-shelf or, or more open virtualized equipment so that uh, you have the flexibility to compete with over-the-top vendors. And in video, it's the same situation. You need to be more flexible so that you can compete with over-the-top video. You mentioned a little bit earlier before we got on camera that uh, otherwise, I mean, if, if live TV is not, um, if, if they don't do something to combat the over-the-top threat, the challenge they're going to have is that they may be relegated to just maybe news and sports, and they need to be able to be as nimble as the over-the-top guys, right, to be able to launch a channel on demand and just test things out, right? Absolutely, and, and I, think, um, I think there's a fundamental shift underway, right? The eyeballs are moving from just the television to, um, to um, iPads to... to personal computers to smartphones and any other smart tablet. And in order for, for uh, many of the, the operators to be competitive in that world, they have to evolve as well. They have to be able to put their content onto those devices sure. quickly and efficiently. And uh, we are enabling that vision for them. And also, likewise, I mean, when you compete with the over-the-top players, sometimes they have great ad insertion technology and advertising technology that allows them to monetize really well. You also have developed ad insertion technology that allows, for example, a DVR program to have different ads depending on when it's played. Uh, it's, a, it's a good point, Rich, because our vision really is that at the end of the day, if I'm a consumer, I should have the flexibility and the freedom to put any type of content that I want in the cloud as my own personal locker. So we are big into this, this vision of cloud DVR. But then the, the added advantage of that is that you can insert advertising um, on, on the fly um, for that user um, throughout the lifespan of the content. So I, I could be viewing the content today and get ads that are relevant to, um, to today's sales or today's promotions. And then six months later, if I reaccess that content, I can insert fresh ads relevant to that point in time. So it's a great opportunity for consumers as well as operators to not only provide a new service model to their customers, but also uh, create more ads and ad inventory. And there's also the potential to target the advertising more uh, based upon what you know about that consumer, right? Absolutely. Mixing the, the analytics with uh, the insertion technology leads to a lot more opportunity. So we can not only personalize the ad, but we can vary them based on the device type and, obviously, as, as you mentioned, the consumer preferences as well as history, background, gender, so on and so forth. Sure. With cross-referencing with databases, you could see that the, the consumer may be in the market for a car. They, so maybe the, um, the auto companies will put a premium on flashing an ad in front of them, or maybe they're a, uh, a wealthier household. So All of those possibilities uh, come into play, and uh, um, the underlying technology is there to enable it. Fantastic. Now, is there anything else that we didn't touch on that, that the potential customers that you have out there should know about? Well, well, a couple of key messages. Like, first of all, we are um, really excited to shape the industry uh, with them. Uh, we have um, a broad portfolio. We are into ad management as well as the infrastructure. And we have great partnerships. We have uh, partnerships with HP, Microsoft, uh, with IBM, with Cisco, with Arista, and uh, with Accenture, and uh, we are bringing a, a big ecosystem to our customers to solve real-world problems, problems that relate to um, how they can monetize, how they can manage or move their video content. And that's our theme, that's our mission. We've had a great, exciting show at IBC. We've almost uh, 20 press releases since August announcing either new wins or new product initiatives. Uh, so we are moving, moving at a rapid pace. We, the biggest testament for us is last year we only had two proof of concepts of next-gen technology. 
Uh, today we have 90 proof of concepts wow. in various stages with our customers. So customers are responding well. We thank them and, and most importantly we thank uh, um, all of those customers that are adopting this vision because uh, we believe that in order to stay bold and relevant our customers will have to move to the vision we've articulated. Makes a lot of sense and yeah. certainly something that is um, it's happening in telecom and we, it's happened many times in telecom, right? There was a move to IP and, and now there's a move to uh, open systems and software. So, I mean, we, we con constantly see transformation and same thing in video. So you can definitely draw that parallel and, in fact, I think it's a very relevant parallel because uh, we learned the lessons from there and we can sure. apply the lessons. And it's worth mentioning that, I mean, the, a lot of the people, such as yourself, are people who came and did this in the telecom world more more than once. We, we have been parts of some very exciting transitions, whether they were from TDM to I, voice over IP or whether they were from fixed line to wireless or whether it was the, uh, the broad introduction of the Internet for all of the values that we know and enjoy today. So um, I think we've learned uh, some very good lessons and actually it's great that the broadcast industry is going next versus being first because we can apply those lessons and um, really deliver this uh, a lot faster than the other industries. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time. This was great. Well, thank you, Rich.